Hello and welcome viewers to another stream of football behavior management. Today we're going to talk about the personality of Tony Casarino, if that's how you pronounce it. Um, and I see you wondering, who is Tony Casarino? Well, he is a semi-famous uh, football player. Um, he played for Chelsea, he played for the national uh, Irish team. Uh, somehow Tony Cascarino turned out to be an Irish guy. Um, so that's all uh, well, nice and well. But the reason why I chose Tony Cascarino is because I think that he has a type 6 loyalist brain. And that is a, a very rare combination of having a type 6 loyalist brain uh, with a professional football player because uh, the evolutionary behavioral patterns of the type 6 loyalist uh, are quite incompatible or at least uh, make uh, playing football quite difficult. Um, so uh, if you have any questions, if you have questions about the previous, uh, um, uh, I say uh, the previous uh, the profile that we did, uh, we started with uh, type 1 Pep Guardiola, then we did type 2 Ronaldo, type 3 Ruud Gullit, Type 4, Romario. Type 5, uh, Marco van Basten. And now type 6, Tony Cascarino. If you have any questions, uh, please put them in the chat. Uh, if not, then we are going to start. So if you're watching this for the first time, there is a general introduction on the site. Let me just quickly go there and put in the link. Uh, so that if you look at the general introduction, if you missed most of it, then you can understand why we do not believe that there is such a thing as personality. Instead, there are the evolutionary behavioral patterns as described by cybernetic big five theory. That is how we look at it. And if you follow the link in the chat, then you can actually uh, follow along. So, so far, here he is, Tony Cascarino, uh, brain type number six. Uh, why do we talk about brain types rather than personality? Because uh, the whole evolutionary behavioral patterns are based on the biological structure of your brain. Uh, if you have a lot of dopamine sensitive cells like I have, then you have different uh, behaviors than if you have uh, the uh, brain type of Tony Cascarino who has uh, neither neither many uh, dopamine sensitive cells nor uh, that many oxytocin uh, sensitive cells and that makes for a uh, uh, lot of evolutionary behavioral uh, patterns that are turning around fear and of course fear and thinking and also about thinking and fear and thinking are of course quite uh, uh, yeah, unhandy uh, for playing football and that is of course uh, why we find so only so few uh, uh, football players with a type 6 loyalist brain. Um, how do I figure that he has a type 6 loyalist brain? Well, let's, let's go into it and see in his autobiography. He is summing it up perfectly, according to The Guardian. For as long as I can remember, there has been a little voice in my head that highlights my weaknesses and undermines my confidence. And so this is typical what the, the, the people with a type 6 brain do, is that they are constantly thinking and thinking and thinking and making these uh, 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 disaster movies inside their head and uh, seeing all the dangers, all the failures and everything can go wrong. They're quite pessimistic. Um, but especially the thinking part. So if we look to the neuroprime model, as we have seen it before, then you can see here that type six is uh, on the bottom to the left near exploration. And here the exploration is not the exploring of the outer world, but the exploring of the inner world. And uh, that is the reason why uh, People with a brain type six uh, think so much. Um, and what do they explore in, inside their head? Of course, all the things that can go wrong, uh, all the things that they can fail, that they uh, uh, have weaknesses, uh, just ex uh, in the way that Tony Cascarino describes in his autobiography. 
And so he continues, uh, I think, too much during the games. So that is a big issue, of course. And again, it is completely um, uh, understandable, given that he is scoring so high on exploration. Um, but of course, thinking during matches is uh, quite unhandy. We've already seen that uh, uh, the, the whole exploration part can be used uh, as good if you have game intelligence and you can scan the game and then you can use uh, uh, that to predict where uh, or you can uh, pick up on patterns and then predict where the uh, opponent will be, where there will be opportunities to attack, where uh, the opponent will attack. So it's not all bad uh, uh, exploration. But if it's this, this inner voice, it's the, that's what we call inner self-talk, uh, during the match that is uh, very unhandy. And you can see that... Uh, in order to reach, reach a peak performance, players should stay away from it. And uh, th that is, for instance, the reason why we saw that with type 3 successful workers, uh, we want the, them stressed uh, on the pitch. We have uh, come in the uh, episode on the type 3 successful worker. We've gone through the uh, report that I made for a real superstar talent uh, from Denmark. Um, and you, we, and you can see that I met, uh, that I regular said, okay, don't relax too much because as soon as they start to relax, they start to overthink. Why? Because they move from the three to the six. So actually, when you look at the whole model in, in combination with football, uh, the loyalist position is the, uh, exactly the position where uh, we want to make sure that people stay away from. And so, of course, if that is your uh, brain type, then it's, of course, very difficult to get away from it. And that's the reason why Tony Cascarino is describing uh, this evolutionary behavioral pattern of constantly thinking during the match, which is, of course, a bad thing. And they uh, should not think uh, during the match, but they should be uh, completely in flow uh, going with the match and uh, acting unconsciously, which is very difficult for the type six loyalist. And so he continues, most players analyze performances after a game. Not me, I do it all the wrong way. I think about how I'm playing as I play. And this is what, again, this inner self-talk where they just are con continue to discuss um, how the match is going with himself during the match, which is, of course, is uh, very bad, but very understandable for a, someone with a type 6 brain. Um. Three bad passes, and I'm looking at the touchline. They are Tony Cascarino's words, but plenty of players would nod their heads when reading them, including possibly the current Chelsea number nine. That's actually this is an article about Fernando Torres because he had uh, to, uh, a bit of problems. Uh, and they uh, compare these problems with Tony Cascarino because he's, and that's also the reason why I chose him, even though he's not that famous as a football player, uh, even though he played for Chelsea. Um, but the, he is one of the few football players who's openly talking about uh, uh, mental issues. So we're going to dive into that, uh, but not before we've actually read it uh, more about it. Um, and so here is an ar another article about Tony Cascarino, and this actually the uh, uh, also about his auto autobiography. Um, uh, the book, goes written by Irish journalist and Tony's personal friend Paul Kimmich, is different from many football books. It shows that being a professional player is not always synonymous with living like a star. At the beginning of his autobiography, Tony describes himself stuck in the fog. And this is how uh, many people who are depressed, of course, describe depression as being stuck in a fog. Their brain simply doesn't work anymore. And what happens is that the limbic system uh, is trying to take over the system. The neocortex is also fighting for control. And the uh, limbic system is sending out, uh, uh, I said, distress signals that uh, uh, hinder the functioning of the neocortex. And that's why people have the idea of, oh, I'm, I, my head is stuck in this fog. It is 2000, Tony has been a professional footballer since 1982, but he does not enjoy playing football anymore. He lives with his French second wife, Virginie, and their five-year-old daughter, Meva, in Nancy. Of Nancy, I should say, as it's French, of course. As he drives his daughter to the school before training, he calculates the monetary gains he made as a footballer. 
and subtract all the expenses that he has and that he will have in the face of the future, uh, have to face in the future. Um, and this is uh, typical for players of uh, people, yeah, people, but also players with a type six brain, the loyalists, uh, when they are stressed. Uh, if they are stressed, they move towards uh, type three. Uh, we have seen that the whole uh, neurogram model is a very uh, um, dynamic model. Uh, our brains are uh, capable of stressing, of relaxing, and uh, neither stress nor relaxing. And in times of stress, uh, our brain produces completely different kind of uh, evolutionary behaviors than in uh, times of relaxation. In times of relaxation, uh, the best of our, uh, or the most positive versions of our evolutionary behavior uh, come out, but in times of stress, that are the most negative ones. Uh, of course, when playing football, we've seen for type three successful workers, they uh, perform better when stressed. But uh, for type six loyalists, uh, that might also be the case that they perform better if stressed, if stressed. But besides uh, being stressed, uh, uh, sorry, besides being playing better football, of course, the stress has all kinds of negative uh, things that uh, come along with the stress. And in, in the case of type six loyalists, that means that they move from the six. You can see the small six on the bottom left corner and it moves to the three to the bottom right corner. And that means actually that uh, people move from exploration, this is from this inner self-talk, uh, from exploring the inner world, and they move to exploitation. They move from um, being between open for reasoning, which is, of course, also very much about thinking and being detached, uh, where they have this dissociation from the real world and constantly think about the world rather than uh, live in the world. But then they move towards... Um, scoring high and open for experiences and uh, uh, scoring high on extraversion and especially extraversion as uh, only indirectly to do with introverted or extroverted uh, behavior but it is mainly about the sensitivity of, of for material rewards uh, or actually being highly sensitive to material rewards so not in in the neutral state the players but also people with the type 6 loyalist brain are quite uh, neutral uh, or actually detached from um, concerns about uh, material rewards. But when stressed or if stressed, I should say, they become highly worried about uh, money. And that is exactly what we here see here in this, uh, uh, oh, in this one, in this description of his autobiography, uh, that he is uh, he is busy worrying about money, what is very typical for um, uh, stressed people with a type six loyalist brain. Uh, he knows very well that in a short while he ha will have to retire. He is scared about his future, angst, depression, a constant sense of inadequacy. These feeling feelings were constantly present for Tony on the pitch and in his personal life. And here we see again that not only that uh, this uh, thinking, uh, has, uh, the evolutionary behavioral uh, patterns of thinking, but also worrying, depression, uh, angst, uh, uh, all those uh, feelings are so typical for people with a type six loyalist brain. And, um, and of course, and this is what uh, I wanted to discuss mostly, this also happens for football players. In fact, the research has shown that about one in three players battles with fears, anxiety, anger issues or depression, uh, which is quite high, but it's also quite a tough life, uh, uh, that of the professional football player. There is very little uh, room for mental issues, of course, uh, in, in the club. Uh, footballers do not like to uh, have to go to a psychologist. Uh, sometimes they like to use neurolinguistic programming. So Brendan Rogers of Leicester is well known to be able to use neurolinguistic programming as a manager to uh, get his players uh, to uh, play better than they used to. Uh, but uh, in general, there is very little uh, attention for mental issues uh, during football. And of course, uh, Tony Cascarino is one of the few that is very open about it. And it's also because he's open about it, why I was able of capable of uh, profiling him as a type six loyalist. But you can see this combination of inner self-talk, uh, fear, anxiety, depression, and uh, worries about money are all typical for uh, uh, the type six loyalist. 
Uh, Patoon, hi Patoon, nice to see you. Didn't notice that you were here already. Uh, type six look quite difficult for the self uh, for themselves. Yes, they are. Uh, as indeed, you can um, char characterize all uh, types, all, all of the brain types, uh, and is is he easy or difficult for himself or herself, uh, or is they uh, are they easy or difficult for others? And in the case of the type six loyalist, you're absolutely right. He is, even though he is easy for other people because he's very, very considerate, uh, is, is a semi problem solver in the sense that he uh, most of the time prefers to have problems solved rather than to fight. And even if he has to fight, he often hires others to fight for him. And uh, so he's quite easy for other people, but indeed quite difficult for themselves because they have this just negative outlook on life. They're so much um, busy with all concrete dangers, with risks. Um, I can see everything going wrong quite easily, and uh, the end that they actually feel it also. So it's not only that they uh, that they see the uh, and they think about the disasters, and these are all uh, most of the time these are imagined disasters. Yeah, so I know quite well because my father has a type six uh, brain. I've seen it very close by uh, my whole life. I have also type three. I mean, very. I'm quite a reckless guy, so I created lots of worries for my father. Uh, but indeed, he is uh, my father. But uh, type six loyalist in general, uh, make life for themselves quite difficult. And of course, my father has recognized this at the end of his life. Well, he's still alive. We hope that he will live many more years. And nevertheless, uh, when he turned seventy, he said to me, "Well, maybe I should have not have been so negative my whole life." Um, I might have enjoyed life a bit more. Um, so uh, that is uh, indeed uh, the point. Uh, that's also the reason why they're, uh, of course, uh, so rare in football, because yeah, this is just not uh, very handy when you play football. El Alami, nice to see you. I also did not notice you yet. Um, Good to see you again. How do they deal with doubts in football? I don't know whether you mean uh, with they uh, players in general or um, uh, type six loyalists uh, specifically. In general, uh, they have all these, uh, well, they either uh, hire players who have very little doubts. That's why they also come across as very arrogant. Um, or they actually have a lot of... Um, uh, uh, what I say is for sports psychology techniques, but most of the time these are visualizations that help them overcome doubts. Uh, one of the tricks that often work, works well if a player is uh, lacking in self-confidence, although of course we don't believe in self-confidence, but if he's uh, acting out the um, behavioral patterns of doubt, then uh, showing them the highlights of the, how well he can play often helps them to uh, to, to uh, I say, uh, regain that uh, wonderful play. Uh, good, you see, your your um, your mean the type six loyalist uh, is specific. So uh, yeah, that's um, that's clearly not not uh, going well. And so that's one of the reasons why Cascarino uh, had a lot of issues while he was playing football, because I had no he had no way of dealing with doubt. Um, had he, I don't, of course, I don't know whether it would have worked, but I work a lot with type six loyalists and um, visualization exercises help them a lot. So they can actually use, for instance, the black and white rewinding technique to get rid of lots of doubt. There are other techniques to build self-confidence. Uh, there are techniques that we use to make sure that you improve your self-image, that you get a 30 year plan and stuff like that. That can all help you uh, deal with doubt. But most football players are, um, uh, I say, uh, not familiar with those techniques. And that is the reason why uh, I work with FC Twente uh, among other clubs and agents. So I can uh, help them uh, make sure that they have the best circumstances for their players. Uh, indeed, also by using techniques uh, from neurolinguistic programming and hypnosis. Um, and if you look at Cascarino specifically, in this model so we know that the open for reasoning part is quite bad for football players because if they start to think during the match that is just a big issue 
if they um, uh, and so we don't want them to be open for reasoning or we want to stay away from that and the only uh, so there are two ways for cascarino to go there to go away from the open from reasoning and that's where the doubts are so he can either move towards type three successful worker but that means that he's stressed or to type nine mediator uh, the mediator would uh, of course that will be the relaxation pattern that will be quite uh, um, uh, how you say that would be that would be great for him emotionally because now he would relax but as you can see uh, that is com uh, the mediator is very much associated with social stability uh, with agreeableness and with defending now cascarino was a uh, center forward a striker so he needed to be a low on this diagram. He needed to be close to autonomy because that's the main uh, indicator that he is uh, going to be a good attacker. And that means basically that for him uh, to play football would be, okay, I need to be stressed. If I'm not stressed, I won't play uh, the kind of football that the club wants me to play or the manager wants me to play. Um, well, Ben is uh, back strong type six and is for any type six, yes, of course. Uh, that, that is why we do is we do a series on football uh, for the fact that I work in football uh, in professional football world. Um, I work for clubs, and we hope to use this uh, more and more. Um, and um, that's why we do the series. But of course, uh, my work is much broader than just football, and this applies to all uh, sixes. We're just uh, focusing today on the football players with a type six brain shayla has also a question hi shayla i did not see you yet as well but good to see you again are there the same problems with the relaxed type one yes kind of just there's not exactly the same exactly when they are open for reasoning yes so you don't want to have a, a type one uh, perfectionist uh, be uh, too relaxed you want them uh, uh, either yes either stressed if they're an attacker or or in the neutral state if they're a defender for ex not, not not exactly the same but almost very similar issues uh, because for the simple reason that uh, uh, yeah if, you, you do not want to go and think during the match that is basically what you don't want to happen A type six watching this who doesn't play football, what might be their biggest type six non football takeaway, please? Uh, well, uh, relax, but that goes for every type. Uh, you can better relax than, uh, than stress. Um, so con let's continue because there's lots more to learn about the life of Tony Cascarino, of lots more, a bit of more. And then we can skip because now they're going to discuss his all uh, his career. We'll believe that he has a great uh, career. Um, so let's start here to continue. With a career consisting of few glories and many more unsatisfying experience on the pitch. As a, again, yeah, that's the reason why type six are so rare in football. It's just not the best brain type to have if you want to be a pro football player. And that's also one way that we use the uh, neurogram model. Uh, we're helping uh, very young kids. We can figure this out at the age of eight. Uh, in reality, we'll, we'll do it from the age of 13 or higher. And so we, I actually coach uh, young kids who uh, are young boys who uh, are thinking about or who have, who have a chance, but the chance is extremely small, eh, of course. But they do have a shot at uh, being a pro football player. And, uh, of course, knowing uh, your brain type at a fairly early age uh, helps you uh, figure out whether football is something for you or not. So I, I have not I, I so far I have not yet... Uh, uh, worked with a uh, type six uh, talent um, of a talent with a brain type six so uh, but if i do i can <laughs> i say explain that it is uh, pro pretty much uh, quite uh, a tough thing for him uh, to do as a type six and that's sure that it's possible but it will be much harder than on average 
And so he has a career with consisting of few glories and many more unsatisfying experiences on the pitch, with a diff difficult personal life ruined by his unfaithfulness to his wives. And again, this is, of course, uh, typical evolutionary behavioral patterns of the uh, type three successful worker who is using deceit uh, in many different ways. I have to admit, I'm absolutely completely faithful in my current relationship. I will probably go straight to heaven if I uh, die. Nevertheless, in my previous relationship, uh, I uh, was quite unfaithful. I cheated a lot. And, uh, and again, the stressed type six loyalist is going to behave in that way as well. Uh, ruined by his unfaithfulness to his wife and his devotion to poker. Perhaps it's not surprising that Cascarino tried to tie himself to Ireland. He wanted to be proud of something. Uh, devotion to poker, we'll see. This is uh, the, the what happens is that, uh, well, let's go back to the uh, neurogram model. And uh, so the... Uh, in a normal situation, type six, uh, being very risk averse is, of course, uh, not into gambling at all. They don't like to gamble. They think it's uh, too risky. Um, nevertheless, they're quite good and deep thinkers. So, so they, their ability to, be an to analyze and they're quite patient. Eh? So the whole exploration, uh, uh, all the types on, this, on, on the exploration part, they have the patience to play poker. <laughs> if I play poker, I'd go just... Mm, a six and a seven. Mm, maybe I can fool them. Maybe I can bluff them. Here, my money. And of course, that fails uh, almost all of the time because my brain is just too reckless to play poker. So to play poker, you have to be really um, patient. And that is much better for the exploration, uh, the time scoring uh, on exploration. Uh, there is a uh, question. Would you discourage a type 6 to be a professional football player or would you encourage, encourage them to proceed but learn NLP techniques? Well, this is, a, uh, uh, th this is the whole problem. That's why I uh, work with young kids uh, or young boys who are very talented but uh, are not yet, uh, have not yet made it. And so if you look at the situation in the Netherlands, that's what I know best. They're in the, the uh, category between 13 and 18 year old. And so still the under 18s. Uh, there are 20,000 boys who uh, have a chance um, of uh, making it as a pro player. And who are, I say, in line of uh, being selected for one of the pro teams. Um, but of those 20,000, only 200 uh, will make it. So you literally have a chance from one in 100. But the problem is, of course, that by the age of 13, uh, then of, the, of those 200, most of them already play for a pro club. Um, and if you're, so if you're still playing at the amateurs at the age of 13, 14, then uh, the chance of you making it drops even further to maybe one in 1,000. Um, so here's the situation. I'm actually uh, literally coaching a kid uh, right now. Um, uh, he's 13. He is uh, still playing with the amateurs. So he, at best, he has a one in 1,000 sh shot. What are we going to do? Are we going to say to the kids, well, you, the chance is just too small. Forget about it. Uh, you're just too much stressed over it. You can better relax and take away his big dream. Or uh, say, well, okay, even though, he, even though the chance is extremely small, we're going to give you all the techniques that are necessary to uh, make it big time. And... Um, and, let, and, and yeah, what are, what are you going to do? And in fact, of course, uh, as a NLP coach or an NLP trainer, I don't decide that. I, uh, that's not my decision. So my, my work is finding out what he really wants and then help him get what he really wants. But the problem is that he, he is still uh, undecided. So he, said, uh, he says, oh, I understand that the chance is really, really small. And uh, so uh, the best for me would be to... Uh, uh, um, would be to admit that uh, this is not going to work and just play for fun and relax and, uh, and uh, go and do other things in my life. So that's what he says. At the same time, he also says, uh, but then he says, yeah, but, uh, but I do really want to fight for I said, okay, so we, uh, we're going to use, yeah, we're going to discourage you in, if, if I would uh, answer it in your question of the way your question puts it. Um, 
But then he says, yeah, but I still want to fight for it because I do think that even if there's a super low chance that I still want to go for the chance and not have regrets. And so the, the kid uh, himself is not, is, is neither, he, ha he hasn't made up his mind yet. He doesn't know yet what he wants. So we can help him with NLP techniques also to uh, become more clear on what he really wants. Uh, but it is, yeah, it's a very difficult thing. Uh, are you going to... Uh, uh, I say disappoint him now at the age of 13 by taking away his big dream or are you going to uh, help him go along and then he will be very disappointed at the age of 14 or 15 once it still it's still at one point he finds out that he's not going to make it so of course that um, that is very difficult and there's no good answer by the way so it's not like uh, it's not like I say this is what you do it is uh, completely uh, up to whatever happens next. Uh, if an agent is wooing a type six to a new team, how? Uh, well, uh, yes, given that they're so rare, I think that the type six uh, would probably just go along with whatever the agent uh, uh, proposes. So I don't think there's much in there that, that there's much issue with uh, getting a type six uh, if he wants to play football professionally he's probably uh, quite happy that there is a club that wants it so it is not uh, i don't think it's difficult to uh, woo him for to play for a specific team and so going back to the gambling part and so the uh op the, the people who are open for exploitation and we score high on exploitation and um, they are uh, quite into gambling and um, and so you can see that the uh, evolutionary of the, the, the evolutionary stress behavior for the type six loyalist increases the likelihood that he's going to be suspect uh, uh, that he's going to gamble. Is it unlikely that the NLP techniques are going to work if the kids de decide to proceed? Well, it's, uh, it's unlikely that the NLP techniques are going to make him a pro a footballer. So they might increase the chance of becoming professional by a little bit. Mm -hmm. But they are not going. So if you're, if your chance to uh, uh, become a pro player is one in one thousand, uh, and you use NLP, then you probably uh, increase your odds to one in one nine hundred. So we have about a ten percent better chance. Uh, but that is still a very, a very low and very small chance, because of course, uh, yeah, your ability to play uh, or technique, your ability to play uh, uh, football, uh, the way your body is. Uh, uh, you know, how long uh, the length of your body at age 13, uh, how aggressive you are, all that of kinds of things are things that uh, uh, are outside of the scope of NLP. It's more unlike than for the other types. Um, well, I think, yes, uh, if, you have, if you have a type 6 uh, loyalist brain, making it as a pro player is simply, uh, yeah, the, the chance is even smaller than it, also, than it already is. And you have to work a lot harder and you're going to suffer a lot more than uh, other types. Of course, not all other types you might have find. We might find other types who also suffer, but uh, type 6 will suffer quite a lot. And so you can see that the gambling part is typical uh, stress behavior. And so of course, Tony Cascarino being stressed, uh, he is going to uh, play poker. Um, uh, so here we see at the at 38, Cascarino decided to end his career at Red Star Saint Quentin in the French third division. And then you are really dropped uh, really down if you go from Chelsea to uh third division and however he ended up leaving the club after, after only two matches he turned his attention to poker appearing on the celebrity poker club as a player and party poker then as a commentator his team also won season four of a celebrity benestoir a, a competition required constant to manage calcic football teams now so he's doing better on television than on the pitch a reality fee seemed like a logical step for a player who never really at ease with himself, uh, was still seeking the glory only ever found at one club. After his success at Millwall, he could never impose himself in England and found it easier to move to France, where the pressure was less intense 
he almost certainly knew he would never play for Italy or England, so he gave his alliance, alliance to Ireland, and later only desired the acceptance of the adopted country. Okay, that's, uh, that's more about his things. And so, but I wanted to mention that actually um, in my work with uh, famous Dutch uh, television stars, uh, so for, for the Dutch among you, uh, Ali Bey, uh, Terroriaab, I've uh, coached them, um, put them on the path of neuro-linguistic programming, uh, calculated their brain types, and they both have a type 6 loyalist brain. So actually you can see that the stressed uh, type 6 loyalist is uh, very uh, eager to work with TV and reality TV. So I find that uh, also another interesting uh, pattern. Which other jobs then uh, a football player is type six unlikely to success uh, to succeed with? Well, I think and anything in the military, uh, the police, uh, fire, uh, I say, uh, fire brigade, anything that puts you in harm's way is uh, uh, yeah, it's not very particularly liked by type six loyalists. And of course, football is war, uh, as our Dutch manager Michael Rines would say. Uh, so uh, if you're going to football or uh, play football, you're going to put yourself in harm's way. And that is one of the major reasons why uh, uh, players with a type six loyalist are so rare. And so to continue uh, at the end, uh, and we have this uh, model, but you can also have this model. And here you have the uh, uh, psychopathologies according to the neurogram model, all based on cybernetic big five theory, to be clear. And here you can see that if you do too much or uh, too little of certain uh, evolutionary behavioral patterns, that they become problematic. So the uh, first rule is, uh, okay, when is something, uh, when is a certain behavior a psychopathology? And the answer is very nicely formulated by cybernetic big five theory, because it's basically if you're structurally incapable of uh, achieving your goals, then you suffer from uh, psychopathologies. Um, and in the case of Tony Cascarino, it's clear that he was uh, unable to uh, achieve his goals uh, structurally. So indeed, he was quite... Uh, he had quite a lot of problems. And the type six, uh, the personality disorder that is associated with it is not listed here. It's one of the differences between the neurogram model and the uh, cybernetic big five theory. Uh, even though most of it is the same, there are small differences. So actually the associated uh, personality disorder with the type six loyalist is the fearful uh, personality disorder. The, uh, which is, of course, uh, very logical if you see all the fears described by Tony Cascarino in his whole life. Uh, but besides that, you can see that uh, psychosis is an issue. And if he's stressed, then he moves too much to rigidity. Um, but the other uh, things are quite important are the aspects. And that is basically a motivation. So basically uh, not finding the willpower to do something. A volition, which means that he is unable to actually decide what he wants to do. Anhedonia, which is, means that uh, he doesn't feel good. And limited feelings, which are all the uh, typical uh, 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 psychopathologies, uh, the evolutionary behavioral patterns uh, done too much uh, rather than uh, just enough. And if he's stressed, then it's edited is also hallucinations and mania. So that are all the typical problems that a player with uh, um, a type six brain would suffer. And so this uh, uh, is actually why also we think that it's important to have uh, for, for all your football players, either you're an agent or uh, a club, know what kind of brain type he has, because then you know what are the signs that we uh, have to look for to check to see whether he's still uh, within the healthy margins, uh, capable of achieving his goals or where he has left those margins and is structurally incapable of achieving his goals. And of course, in the latter situation, you can then offer him help. 
Uh, there's another, uh, yeah, I think the question was already asked for the loyalist as a football player. Do type six in general suffer more than most? Uh, well, uh, probably more than most uh, if you calculate it uh, on a uh, on a person based uh, because the, most people have a type nine mediator uh, brain. And even though mediators also suffer, they do not suffer as much as type six. But type four uh, romantics suffer a lot. The type one perfectionists uh, suffer a lot. So it's hard to compete uh, making a competition who suffers the most uh, but of course uh, they are uh, quite difficult for themselves and so uh, also the uh, whole uh, i say the whole uh, psychopathology uh, part of the model is of very much interest to the clubs and to player agents because now they can uh, spot early signs that there's something wrong with their player and they can intervene and make sure that he gets back on track. So, so far, my story about Tony Cascarino. Are there any questions? Remarks? Or was it all clear and understandable? If so, then we are done for today. If you are not following me yet, please do follow me. The more people follow me, the more uh, I get motivated to create streams like this. Eloquently done, thank you. Well, you're welcome, Ben. Um, and so also, if you know people who are, of in are interested in these kind of things, uh, please point them to uh, the stream. Uh, Shaila says thanks, well, you're welcome as well. Uh, because uh, we do want to get a big uh, an audience as possible and it also makes me uh, more inclined to create a stream like this so in fact i'm i am inclined to do the next episode tomorrow uh, tomorrow at 7 p.m central european standard time then we will discuss a really famous football player maybe one of the most famous uh, maradona uh, he has a type 7 a hedonist epicurean brain of course, at, uh, this, uh, he uh, recently, of recently, I think last year, he died, and uh, he has uh, a, a, an example of uh, how not to do uh, the type six loyal of uh, the type seven uh, hedonist evolutionary behavioral patterns. Nevertheless, it is quite obvious that he has a type seven brain. Uh, Vegas images, thanks for the stream. Well, again, you're also welcome. If there are no more questions then i thank you for watching and hopefully we'll see each other tomorrow for the stream on maradona that should be a good one that might be uh, so uh, much fun of course because hedonists and epicureans are always fun no more remarks thank you thank you thank you bye 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 we're done for today see you tomorrow